Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to see how to do a 3D inversion from regular parallel 2D survey lines. For this problem, you're going to select 3D and check 3D survey from regular 2D lines. The next step is to select the file format you have. For this problem, we are going to use syscal files. Basically, output of process application in comma separated value format. The lines I'm going to use have three meters the spacing and they are basically three meters apart from each other. And then I'm going to import all the lines. Now bear in mind, in whatever order you have them in your operating system, the lines are going to be imported in that order. So if I do it in descending order, then you are going to, recipe is going to read them from line 3, line 2, and line 1. So I'm going to select the, this one and import them, select them all and open. Sometimes if you have large surveys, that take a quite a while. This is a small scale, so it's pretty fast. And for making it even faster, we're not going to do any indisperization inversion today. As you can see, in the electrodes tab, we have different labels for each line, one, two, and so on. And then the Y value in the XY plane has changed as well, based on the spacing that we initially defined. In this specific file, we have reciprocal measurements, so we can filter our data. I am going to select reciprocal error and remove all the data points that have more than 10% reciprocal error. Additionally, Syscal instruments make some dummy measurements for faster surveys, which we don't want. I am going to remove those as unpaired electrode and unpaired measurements. And since we have reciprocal measurements, we can define an error model. This is optional, but helps the inversion a lot. Based on the previous studies of that site that we are having this data, a parallel error is just fine. And as you can see, it has a very good R squared value. For defining a mesh, you have the option of uh, defining a characteristic length. By default, is half electrode spacing, meaning two elements. And the growth factor from top, meaning at the bottom of your mesh, the elements would be this time eight times bigger than the elements at the top of your mesh. And the growth back factor from bottom is basically for the region outside of your fine coarse boundary. And it means that the cell is going to get larger much, in a much rate, faster rate. I am going to select four and the default two is just fine. And build the mesh. You can completely skip this and just go right away to inversion. But I want to show you that as we selected the half electrode spacing character, the characteristic length, you can see there is two elements in between each two electrodes. And also, since we define an error model, a weight and B weights are now zero and invert our data. The 3D inversion is usually a slow process so I am going to pause it and come back when there is something important happening. At the end of each iteration you would see the changes in resistivity on the surface. You would also see a reduction in RMS value versus the iterations. If this is not the case, your inversion is not going in the right direction, you have to kill it, maybe filter your data, and reinvert your data.
It is also important to note that a good inversion usually shows the solution after three or four iterations. If your inversion is going more than that and it's keep going, you probably have a very low A weight and B weight values, or you have to clean up your data. As you can see, the solution converged in four iterations and the results are shown in the results tab. You have a variety of options to choose. You can select showing resistivity in log 10 or ohmmeter, sensitivity map, and so on. You also add a grid usually to see the locations of anomaly on an XYZ volume as well as ability to select the range of your color bar. Let's say you don't like it to be from this to that and you can change that. I'm going to select the minimum from 1.1 for example and apply. You have the ability to choose a color map. I am going to select rainbow for this problem and as you can see I'm already seeing a conductive top layer which has an underlying resistive body. This study site was conducted in an area that we had a clay layer atop which was on top of the freshwater aquifer. That's why this part is more resistive. You have the ability to define a slices. I am going to add a slice at y at the middle line 3 and some slices at x 5 10 15 and 20 to do that you have to separate them by comma you also can have a slice at z let's say maybe 6 meter is good so minus 6 and apply 3 and as you can see, you have the slices and the areas of interest. Let's remove them for now. You also can select what volume to be shown. I want the resistive volume, so I am going to select anything below 2.1 to be not shown. If I do that, I can see the resistive body. Similarly, I can only show the top layer like that. You have the ability to save the screenshot or save the data in VTK and that format which you can then use in Paraview for more analysis. As a good inversion, always should have the normalizer between negative 3 and 3, we see this inversion has gone pretty well. If not the case, you can filter the bad data points out and reinvert your data. Thank you very much for watching this video.